We wanted to get the black community in Birmingham involved, and the way you get people involved is get their children involved. They were taking the kids out of school, you know, marching, and I thought that was unnecessary. In fact, my idea was the kids, many of them didn't know what it was all about to start with. Most adults have bills to pay, house notes, rents, car notes, utility bills, but the young people, wherein they can think at the same level, are not at this point hooked with all those responsibilities. So a boy from high school, he get the same effect in terms of being in jail, in terms of putting pressure on the city as his father, and yet he's not, there's no economic threat on the family because the father's still on the job. I'm on my way, I'm on my way to freedom land. Freedom land. Thursday, May 2nd was D-Day, the day the children began to march in Birmingham. At first, the groups were small. Policemen arrested them, loaded them in paddy wagons, and took them away to Birmingham jail. As the children continued to march in increasing numbers, paddy wagons became inadequate. Finally, School buses were brought in to gather the demonstrators. By the end of that Thursday, 700 children were taken to Birmingham jail. Friday, more than a thousand children stayed out of school and arrived at the 16th Street Church to march. Bull Connor tried to stop the marches before they began and brought out the city's police dog. was brought in and Bull Connor ordered water hoses turned on the demonstrators. With 100 pounds of pressure per square inch, the water hit with enough force to knock the bark off tree. As water pounded the demonstrators, David Van was on the phone with A.G. Gaston. And he was expressing a great deal of resentment about King coming in and messing up the thing we just when we were getting a new start. And then he said to me, he said, but, but Lawyer Van said, they've turned fire hoses on a little black girl. They're rolling that little girl right in the middle of the street now. I can't talk to you no more. If that, it was there to stand up on my building looking down on Bull Con and them shooting water in the park right across from my office there in that park. That's so outstanding thing in my mind right now. I just couldn't imagine what could happen. Bull Connor's white tank patrolled the city streets as the fire hoses stopped the demonstrators. Some hid behind the trees of Kelly Ingram Park. Others frolicked in defiance. The conflict gained national attention, and news coverage of the event shocked the American public. And it was a masterpiece of the use of media to explain a cause to the general public of the nation. Because in those days, you had 15 minutes of national news and 15 minutes of local news. And in marching only one block, they could get enough news film to fill all of the newscasts of all of the television stations of the United States. Photographs appeared in newspapers throughout the world. And the Birmingham story was told in many languages. The Russian newspaper Pravda ran a cartoon of police intimidating a black child. The federal government worried about America's image in other parts of the world. 
Governor Wallace saw it differently. It seems that other parts of the world ought to be concerned about what we think of them instead of what they think of us. After all, we're feeding most of them. And whenever they start rejecting 25 cents of each dollar foreign aid money that we send to them, then I'll be concerned about their attitude toward us. But until they reject that 25 cents out of each dollar that Southern taxpayers pay for foreign aid to these countries, I will never be concerned about their attitude. In the first place, the average man in African Asia doesn't even know where he is, much less where Alabama is. On Saturday, the dogs and water hoses provoked angry responses from bystanders, some of them carrying weapons. Seeing the beginnings of violence, James Bevel borrowed a bullhorn from a nearby policeman. So I took the bullhorn and said, okay, get off the streets now. We're not going to have violence. If you're not going to respect policemen, uh, you're not going to be, uh, you know. So it was, it was strange, I guess, to them. I'm with the police talking through the bullhorn and giving orders, and everybody was obeying the orders. <laughs> it was like, it was wild. But, but, but what, I, what was at stake was the, the possibility of a riot. And that uh, once in a movement, once a riot break out, you have to stop. It takes you four or five more days to get re-established. And I was trying to avoid that kind of situation. Monday, the fifth day of the children's campaign. Comedian Dick Gregory arrived in Birmingham and marched with the young demonstrators. Like hundreds before him, he was arrested. Law enforcement officials were working overtime to keep up with the arrest. There was no such thing as off days. Everybody working seven days, sleeping, catnapping, and just holding fire. We all had the confirmed belief that this couldn't go on for long because he was pressing the issue to the wall. The confrontation moved outside the park. Once again, Bull Connor summoned his firemen. With no place to run, no trees for protection, the demonstrators were hit with the full force of the water. By Monday night, 2,500 demonstrators had been arrested, over 2,000 of them children. All jails in the city and county were filled. At one time, I had, here in this building on the 8th, 7th and 8th floor, we had over 1,200 male juvenile black. On top of our regular complement of probably uh, near 1,000. At the same time, I had 600 female juveniles in the 4-H dormitory at the fairground. Meanwhile, the Justice Department tried to move negotiations forward. I participated in, in all of in order to try to get some kind of agreement between people that, that often wouldn't talk to each other at all. I don't mean that the blacks wouldn't talk to anybody, but I mean there were many whites that wouldn't talk to any blacks, and there were, and there were uh, some, and there were many more whites that wouldn't talk to certain blacks, and there were no whites, I think except for David Vann, uh, who would talk to uh, Martin King. <laughs>